Well, it's not that we couldn't spend more time in Revelation 1, but we are going to move on. Mm -hmm. we've, we've laid a good foundation. Mm -hmm. we've, we've looked at principles, and we've, we've connected to the book of Daniel. We've understood some of the themes, and I think that we have the tools that we need to start our journey right into this first epic of the seven churches. Yes. So we're going to look at the seven churches, or at least begin the seven churches journey. We're going to look at uh, the first church, and we'll just move through. Again, we don't have an agenda, so we can move through as, as fast or as slow as the Holy Spirit leads, so that it's understandable. So we'll start with the first church, which is Ephesus. We'll, we'll read the verses, and we'll start to break down the time frame figure out where we are, what this message means in the context of the history, and then also what it means to us today, which, right. you know, there's a principle there of idealism that allows the principles to be applicable to us mm. even right now. And I think we're going to get some, some good stuff here out of the seven yeah. churches. This is it's a beautiful picture. So let's start with a word of prayer. Ivor, you want to lead us off? Yep. So at Heavenly Father, we want to ask that you would uh, bless our study as we open the word once again. Um, Give us insight, Lord. Um, anoint our eyes that we may be able to see the things that you desire us to see. We thank you, Lord, uh, for hearing and answering. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, I wanted just to pick up on the theme, the love theme, because love is a huge theme here in the first church. Mm. Um, they've lost their first love is what it, there is said about them. But before we get into the first church, we have a picture of Jesus standing among the candlesticks. And they're identified, and we did this in an earlier <coughs> session, they're identified in verse 20 as the churches. And so here's the picture, and I call this a prelude of hope. But I want us to pick up this picture with an eye on romance, okay? Mm -hmm. Here's the picture of Jesus standing among these churches. The churches have problems. They have issues. They have baggage. Mm. You know, relationships have baggage. They have baggage. And the thing that I love about this picture is that even though they have issues and they have baggage and they have problems, Jesus is with them. Mm -hmm. Mm. Jesus is with them. Now, what's really significant is as, you, as we look through these churches, we're going to find that there are two churches that have nothing negative said about them. The first one is Smyrna, which is going to be the second church in our order. And the, and the next church, the second church that has nothing bad said about it, is Philadelphia, mm. the church of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. All the other churches, Jesus affirms, and then he corrects. Mm. He affirms, he corrects. Which, by the way, you know, marriage, relationships, start with the positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Affirm your wife, affirm your husband, mm -hmm. affirm your children or you correct. Mm -hmm. He affirms and he corrects. You know, Jesus was the master. Mm -hmm. And he knows that they've got issues. Before he gets to the issues, he pictures himself among them. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Now, he could have pictured himself just with two of the churches. He could have just pictured himself as with Smyrna and Philadelphia. And he could have had this attitude of, when you other five churches get your act together, when you listen to what I have to say, and when you follow my rebukes, you can join our little group over here. Mm. You know, we're the, we've arrived, mm -hmm. and you can join us. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus meets us where we are. Yeah. Right. And this is the message of the book of Revelation. Yeah. Jesus meets us where we are. Mm. Mm -hmm. He knows our baggage. He knows our struggles. He knows our weaknesses. We see this in the Gospels. The woman at the well. Mm -hmm. in the middle of the afternoon because that's when no one else would be there. Mm -hmm. And this woman didn't want to be seen or talked to by anyone else. Yeah. Jesus meets, he knows her life history. He knows everything about her. Mm -hmm. And he tells her that he knows everything about her. But the way that he uh, relates to her and the way that he communicates to her tells her that he cares about her and loves her. Mm -hmm. And she now is free from all that insecurity, all that history. But she's free to run into town and say, come and meet a man that told me everything I ever did wrong. Isn't this the Messiah? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's the picture that Revelation is giving us of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He knows all the problems we have, but he's still with us. Yeah. Mm. Ahead of time, he shows us that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to add something there. Um, in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus is described as uh, having on a golden girdle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's very key because <clears throat> that description goes back to the Old Testament when the high priest, in fact, is found in... Um, uh, it's Exodus 20, 28, verse 4, and it describes the garments of the high priest that he was supposed to put on. The verse ends with these words, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So when we see Jesus with 
this uh, with these garments on, mm. it is signifying that he has now entered into his priestly work. Mm. Part of that, of course, that's going to be uh, after his resurrection, he's ascended. So the vision here of the churches begins with Christ beginning his his work of ministry, mm -hmm. of intercession. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing about this is that he wears a breastplate, right, with the with uh, uh, names of the children of Israel on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? He's bearing them mm -hmm. on his heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that picture of Christ, you know, carrying us, Christ caring for us, Christ loving us, mm -hmm. is what comes before. Look, before I begin to like tell you about yourself, mm -hmm. <laughs> let me just let yes. you know yeah, that I have you on my heart. Yeah, that I'm with oh, you. I'm beautiful. with you. I'm standing with you. Exactly. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I got your back. I got your back. Yeah. And this is the picture. In fact, we see the same picture now. Again, Revelation is simply picking up the story of the Bible. So I ever went to the Old Testament, the priest had the breastplate. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, we see here, he's among the candlesticks. Mm -hmm. So how do we see this illustrated in the life of Christ? Do you remember when Christ was getting ready to go to the cross? He was in the garden, of, uh, he was in the upper room with the disciples and he was getting ready to go to the garden of Gethsemane and then the cross. And he told his disciples that what they were going to do was they were going to betray him. <coughs> mm -hmm. Every single one of them, even Peter denied, I won't betray, no, you're going to, mm -hmm. you'll be the worst. Okay, other than Judas. But then he said this, he said, but I, after I am risen, I'm gonna go before you to, to Galilee. To Galilee. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. Jesus says, you're gonna forsake me, but I'm not gonna forsake you. Mm -hmm. You're gonna run from me, but I'm not gonna run from you. You're gonna deny me, but I'm not gonna deny you. Mm -hmm. See, this is the picture of the gospel. This is the picture in Revelation. Jesus is with us in spite of our failures, our faults, in spite of our, in spite of our abandonment of Him, He sticks it out with us. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's Beautiful. the love that draws us. Mm -hmm. That's the love that draws us. We love Him because He, he first, first loved, loved us. us. And so this picture is vital as we open up the churches because what's going to happen is we're going we're to look at those churches and we're going to see history. The first church is going to show us the history of the early, of the early apostolic age. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to see ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going to see ourselves, mm -hmm. and we're going to think, wow, I thought, you know, okay, let's just start with, with, with the church of Ephesus. Yeah. Jason, read for us the first, what is it, seven, five, six. Seven verses. Seven verses. Seven verses. Seven verses. Okay. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicol how is that? Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans uh, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Mm. So look at this and, and, and understand how it relates to us. I know your works, your labor, your patience. You can't bear those that are evil. You tried them which say they're apostles and are not. You found them liars. You've borne, you've had patience. For my name's sake, you've labored and you haven't fainted. I mean, who among us would not like to have that said about them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whew, that's just a pedigree right there. I mean, mm -hmm. he's just pouring it on. This is all just good stuff. And this describes the experience of the early church, mm -hmm. the early apostolic church. Mm -hmm. So we're starting in Christ's time. We're starting in the apostolic age with this, with this uh, what was the word again? Um, this sequence, what revelation, I mean, Genesis chapter, chapters 1 and 2. We, we describe the sequence the of seven. Creation, yeah, one yeah. through seven, the cycle. Yeah. The cycle, yes. the cycle yes. of seven. Mm -hmm. We're starting right here, we're starting with the apostolic age, with the cycle of seven, and it's gonna take us all the way down to the very end, 
the second coming of Jesus, the time of judgment, post-1844, the first church, apostolic church, this describes they were full of faith and patience and labor, and they tried those that said they were apostles and are not, and they found them liars, and they labored even more, and they had more patience. And more. But what happened? There was something that took place in that early church, something that started to slip in their relationship, and it can happen with all of us. Mm -hmm. When I first came to Jesus, I had nothing to offer him. I was just out of the world, fresh out of the world. The, the words of that hymn, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Mm. I had nothing to offer him. And so I was just, I had this first love experience. I mean, I was just on fire because Jesus had forgiven me. He accepted me and I just wanted to live for him, you know, because I was just, all this guilt was gone. It's like, yes. But then, you know, after a few months, I started, I learned about the Sabbath. I started going to church on the right day. You know, I learned about tithing and started paying my tithe. You know, I was, you know, learned about the Ten Commandments and just started following all the principles of the Bible and studying. And, you know, you know, a few months go by and I'm, you know, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I've labored and I've had patience and I've faith and I've tried those that say they're apostles. You know, I, had, I was going to a lot of different churches, actually, not just the Adventist church. And so I was, you know, trying the different doctrines, see which one was true, you know. So now, well, now, you know, I have a little bit more of a pedigree there. I had a little bit more going on. I guess what I'm trying to say is the greatest enemy of our love for Christ are our works for Christ. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. The greatest enemy yeah, of our love for Christ deep. are mm -hmm. our works for Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm actually quoting Oswald Chambers on that one, mm. but That's it's it's deep. true. Mm -hmm. The more we do, the more the greater the danger that we would start slip our slip from our full confidence, full trust, full weight on Christ to our works. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to lean this way just a little mm -hmm. bit. Self righteousness. Mm -hmm. Self righteousness. Mm -hmm. Let me let me um, throw something in here. Good. Um, we talk about this cycle of one through seven mm -hmm. and how the first church is the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that that's the very thing that happened in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve mm -hmm. were created in perfection. You know, they were mm -hmm. like, yeah, th this is like... First love. Th yeah, first love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But something happens mm -hmm. that causes them to lose that first love. Mm -hmm. They lost that first love. They fell from their position, just like we're reading about this mm -hmm. first church. Mm -hmm. And what happened, Satan came in and told them, you know, you can be righteous by yourself. You don't need God mm -hmm. in order to be righteous. You can know good and evil for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing here this reflects almost like this repetition of history mm -hmm. between the first church and what happened with Adam and Eve. And it's interesting because guess what? What does he say is the reward for this first church? Eat. Of the, of the tree, tree of, of life. life. Yeah. Mm. Points us right back to the, the why is he pointing our mind yeah. back to the garden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could he be trying to tell us, listen, I want you to remember mm -hmm. how mankind got into this in you know, situation in the first place. And yes. look, if you're faithful, mm -hmm. I'm not going to cut you off like I have to do with Adam and Eve from the tree mm -hmm. of life. If you're faithful and don't make the same mistake of mm -hmm. self-righteousness, I can be like God. Sowing fig leaves together. Sowing fig leaves together, <laughs> right? Then I'll give you the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Good stuff because when we see this, when we see the description here, we, we apply it to us. We can apply, we're very practical in applying mm -hmm. this, but we know it's the early church. Yeah. It, it probably, we're going to look at this as the early church period, probably to about 100 AD. Mm -hmm. Paul, as he begins to pass from the scene, and, and later John, as he begins to pass from the scene, both of them are warning the church of the apostasy that's coming in, of people that want the preeminence, John says, of those that are going to come up among you to draw disciples after themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that is the spirit of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think about Antichrist as one religious system or one religious person. No, John says there are many Antichrists. Anti does not necessarily mean against. Right. It also means in the place of. Mm -hmm. In the place of. In other words, we're, we are in danger of putting ourselves in the place that Christ should occupy in the minds and hearts of other people. Mm -hmm. And this is where we have to be very careful. Even here, right now at this table, we have to point people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have to point people to the Word. We can't be pointing people to our opinions, to our pedigree, to what it is that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. The whole point of this is to open up the Word of God and point people to Jesus because He's the only one that can really restore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so about 100 AD and onward, there's this transition that starts, to, starts taking place in the early churches. The first apostles, disciples, pass from the scene. John passes from the scene, and he's warning the church of what's going to come. There's some heavy persecution. 
And heavy persecution will take us into the next church, and that's followed by some compromise that takes place. Mm. And so we see this beginning right here. The do there's a doctrine that's coming in, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, mm -hmm. that is uh, causing compromise in the early church mm. period. Yeah, we, sh we should touch on that, okay. on the Nicol Nicolaitans. Mm -hmm. You have a question. I do. Go, I, do. Go. I just wanted to, well, it's more of a comment. Mm -hmm. In verse 4, you know, when you think about you, when you think about a love relationship and you think about how that, that the, the first love, that's your mm. first love, that's so important to you and how you're going to nurture it and how you're going to spend time with it and how you're going to, you know, mm. get engaged mm -hmm. in it, then Jesus is saying, you've left your first love. Mm -hmm. It's, again, this book of love mm -hmm. This is the romantic mm -hmm. thing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are walking away from our relationship. Now, I like yeah. this. I think we need to, to build on this just a little bit here because mm -hmm. what this is saying to us is you can have all the doctrines right. That's right. You can figure out who the Nicolaitans are and you can figure out who, you can try those that say they're apostles or not and you can find them liars. You can have all of that stuff, but if you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. it's not. It's of not. The candlestick's right. gone. That's the right. candlestick's gone. It's yep. all That's about right. that relationship. The, the, right. the fire has died. Mm -hmm. The fire oh, has died. Ah, taking fire away the candlestick yeah. is taking away the. That's come it. on now. Mm -hmm. Taking away the don't fire. Don't leave them hanging. Don't leave them hanging. Oh, I'm hanging. sorry. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fire. Yeah. yeah. The Your fire is gone. Yeah. Your love is gone mm -hmm. because that's what the book of uh, the book of Song of Solomon actually equates or tells us that fire is a symbol of love. Yeah. Mm. Love is like a fire that cannot be quenched. Quench. So when that fire goes out, mm. what God is saying is that. He's not saying, I've lost my love for you. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you, you have lost your love for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you can rekindle the flame. But you can rekindle oh, the flame. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Like we we, can, we yeah. can call the program Rekindle the Flame. <laughs> yeah. Rekindle the Flame. <laughs> I love it. I That's love it. That's this one right there. That's the yeah. Right. yeah. So um, it's interesting that, you know, we can even look back and see that this very thing happened with Lucifer. Mm -hmm. mm. That he was created perfect. Mm -hmm. and righteous mm -hmm. but he ended up falling right mm -hmm. from his place yes. because he left his first love mm -hmm. so this is something that we see you know reflecting many different levels mm -hmm. even though it's applicable to the church in this mm -hmm. particular time period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can see the principle spilling out into other areas mm -hmm. of the plan of salvation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so um, where are we right now we are this first church is revolving around the 70 week Weeks. prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. right? The fulfillment of it. The fulfillment of that prophecy, mm -hmm. the first church. Mm -hmm. And where is our location? We're in the holy place, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's just important yeah, to understand six. as we move forward. Mm -hmm. But about the, Nicola the Nicolaitans, yeah. if you look down in verse uh, uh, chapter 2 and look down in verse 14, it says, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them. Now, this is speaking about the second church. We're not mm -hmm. going there yet, but we're right. looking at this for the first church. Mm -hmm. Thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Mm -hmm. So the doctrine of the Nicolaitan, whatever that was, was very similar to the doctrine of Balaam, mm -hmm. whatever Balaam was doing. Mm -hmm. And what Balaam was doing, Balaam was supposedly a prophet of God. Right. But he was working against the cause of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the, this principle of compromise, when you mm -hmm. stand for God, you're supposed to stand for God. Mm -hmm. But this principle of compromise in the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. that's what's going on in the early church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The Nicolaitans mm -hmm. are teaching some kind of doctrine in which compromise, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, we're for God, we're for mm -hmm. God, you know we're for God, mm -hmm. but there's beginning to be compromise coming into the church. Um, this, is, this is, I think, a pretty interesting point, is that there, the um, Paul, who wrote the epistles, he also wrote to seven churches. Mm. Interesting. Mm. The yeah. Seven of his epistles are to churches. Yes. Romans, oh. Corinth, Ephesians, Galatians, Galatians. Colossians, Colossians, Philippians. Philippians. 
and uh, Thessalonians. And Thessalonians, mm -hmm. okay. So seven churches, several, I mean, different huh. letters, but seven churches. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, now, John's letter to the seven churches come after Paul's letters to the seven churches. Mm -hmm. But if you read Paul's letters to the seven churches, guess mm -hmm. what he's doing? He's warning King. against yes. apostasy to come. Mm. Second Thessalonians, yes. a man of sin is going to rise. Yep. Yep. Mm. Galatians, yes. you know, let no one uh, uh, deceive you and, t and uh, introduce to you another gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Colossians, beware of the worship of angels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corinthians, All another the, gospel. <laughs> that's right. All these things, these points, it says Paul was, it says as if Paul was warning, listen, Something's mm -hmm. coming, guys. And mm -hmm. You guys are letting some things come up in the church. Mm -hmm. If you don't address this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when John is writing, he's saying, look, these things, mm -hmm. they're beginning to occur now. Yes. You've lost your first love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These things, and, and as a result, you're going to see the man of sin rise. You're going to see this teaching where we pray to angels instead of, you're going to see mm -hmm. another gospel being introduced that mm -hmm. is not the one that Christ spoke. Mm -hmm. All this as a result of leaving your first love mm -hmm. described here in the book of, in, in the first church. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, that, that is really powerful because Paul is even more explicit about specific aspects of Absolutely. what that false teaching was or what those false teachings were. Mm -hmm. He identifies them in a number of different places, like in Galatians, and he talks about specifically what they were doing. And the, the most important thing, the most important solution, as you said, Ivor, the most important solution to what they were doing was to reconnect with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were being taught about another Jesus. They were receiving another gospel. They were receiving another spirit. And just like in uh, Thessalonians, he says in 2 Corinthians that the, the devil would come with ministers of righteousness and as an angel of light. And by the way, Lucifer was a God-given name, and mm -hmm. it means light bearer. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you've got the light, the light, the light, mm -hmm. and that light going out. And Lucifer is the one who is trying to put out the light. Mm -hmm. He's trying mm -hmm. to, to, to quench the light. Hmm. And, the and love. The love, the love, the love. And the other thing that's interesting is the picture that Jesus has here in the candlesticks is him tending the lights, tending mm -hmm. the lights. Mm -hmm. And in, in Yeah, keep the love burning. Yeah, and in mm -hmm. Matthew 25, the ten virgins, they're trimming their wicks so the light can burn brighter and they're needing that extra oil to be added so the light can burn brighter. So the five mm -hmm. foolish virgins actually run out of love. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, Holy Spirit love. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That is so deep. Yeah, they burn out. Mm -hmm. And this is all a relational. This is yeah. what the book of Revelation is. It's relational. And I think that's, that's really what the focus, our focus so often, mm -hmm. you know, in our church, we get, we start majoring in minors. Mm -hmm. You get pulled into a whole other way of thought, which is legalism. And so often in, in many other churches, you get pulled into well, anything goes. Yeah. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. the, I did a little research on the Nicolaitans and, um, and the, the, word, the word that was involved was antinomialism. Antinomianism. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it really is like, you know, cheap grace. Now, mm -hmm. grace is never cheap, mm -hmm. but the whole idea of you can kind of do whatever you want mm -hmm. and giving it, uh, you kind of have permission to mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Yeah. This is showing, and, and, and we have to really apply this to us. How are we relating to our first love? Mm -hmm. Have we gotten sidetracked mm -hmm. from our first love? And, yeah. and we're do, so busy doing the work of the Lord or so busy doing mm -hmm. whatever we're doing, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. that we've lost our first love and we give excuses for it, mm -hmm. like the Nicolaitans. So think about, uh, you know, whenever you start a relationship, you know, whether it was, okay, you know, you're the, the person that you ended up marrying, right? Mm -hmm. Before you got married and you were dating that person, courting that person, whatever, there was that fire there, mm -hmm. you know, and there was that love and, oh man, I can't wait to be with this person. Mm -hmm. You know, I love spending time with them. And then imagine the feeling, you know, like especially as a, as a man, mm -hmm. to know that the woman that you love is now like looking elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That feeling of, mm -hmm. you know, what are you doing? Why are you mm -hmm. doing this? And mm -hmm. you're not like, get out of here. You're just like, please. Mm -hmm. But I want you to think, you know, just take a moment and think, what is Jesus thinking mm -hmm. as he feels his bride to be mm -hmm. beginning to lose her, mm -hmm. her love and mm -hmm. wane? And 
look at the, the, this letter to the first church as Christ saying, you know, almost like with, with tears saying, please, mm -hmm. don't, do, don't leave me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, don't leave yes. me. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to say, look, you know, there's better over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Christ is saying, you know, what, I need, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. No, 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 not what I need to do. Look at what I have done. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, look back at the cross. Look back at the 70 week prophecy mm -hmm. and look at what I did for you as a fulfillment of that prophecy. I came and died for you. Mm -hmm. I love you, you know, this so much. much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember me, remember what I've done for you, and please come back to your first love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Beautiful. One other verse in Jude, and this book is just before the book of Revelation, that I think really nails what you've almost saying also in relation to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, is Jude, and it, I don't say chapter because Jude is one book. There's no chapters in here. So it's Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our mm. God into mm. a license for sin, mm -hmm. lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. And I say a license for sin because that's the modern NIV translation, modern translations. Sin, we're told in 1 John 3, chapter, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, is transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. These men are coming into the church and they're taking the grace of God and turning it into a license to transgress God's law, antinomianism. Right. And so Jude is warning the same thing. And he's, this is also a, a prophetic chapter, if you will, um, talking about the second coming, the third coming, et cetera. So we have, this, this picture that takes place here that fits perfectly the early church and what was taking place in the history of the early church. Mm -hmm. mm. We have principles that apply to us today. Yes. And that is, that, the application of those principles to us is called idealism. Mm. Taking the history and working out the principles and applying it to our lives today. Yeah. And that's what we see taking place in this. And again, we're, we're out of time, but we want to remind our viewers that they can send in their questions in the form of video. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. SSS at 3ABN.org. SSS at 3ABN.org. And yeah. we want to answer some of those video questions. The reason we want video is because we want to have their beautiful mugs involved in the program, <laughs> right? We want, yeah. to, we want right. to encourage and, <laughs> and involve them. So, all right, Jason, close us out with a word of prayer. Would sure. You? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, being with us as uh, we studied the Word today. Uh, please be with the people at home and help them to uh, retain the information that was discussed. Uh, thank you so much for uh, designing such an intricate, but yet, an intricate uh, word, but yet making it understandable mm -hmm. to us. Thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us and uh, giving us a mind to uh, be able to study, discern, and, and retain the information. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.